Greetings from my amazing Canada. Today we have come to visit Niagara Falls, Ontario. Apart from the gorgeous falls, we'll be seeing artificial volcanoes erupt. Take a ride on the 175 foot sky wheel. Watch the falls burst into color. Descend 125 feet to journey under the falls. Watch a cool model train go around a miniature village. Visit a floral show house. Enjoy some stunning walks. Visit the Niagara Butterfly Conservatory. Take a whitewater walk along some Category 6 rapids. Hang thrilled 240 feet above the Niagara Whirlpool on the Whirlpool Aero Car. Ascend 775 feet on the Skyline Tower to get some stunning day and night views. And much, much more. So stay with us on this wonderful adventure. We begin our journey from Toronto's Union Station, where we boarded the double decker GO train to Niagara Falls. The train starts its journey under the 1,815 foot high CN Tower and goes by the Rogers Center. Even during the COVID restrictions, our seating was quite comfortable and we got a seat on the second story of the train. The train goes through some varied landscapes. You can occasionally see Lake Ontario peeping through the buildings or wooded areas. On the way, we can see the city of Hamilton in the distance with the Niagara escarpment looming over the high rises there. After a two hour journey, we finally reached Niagara. After exiting the train, leave the station platform and head to the main gate and there you'll find we go buses waiting to take you down to Table Rock in Niagara. The Wego buses are free for anyone who holds an adventure pass in Niagara. Sit on the right side of the bus facing the Niagara Gorge and as it goes you'll get peaks of the gorge and then after crossing the Rainbow Bridge uh, you can get the first views of the American Falls. A little bit later, you'll get the first peaks of the Horseshoe Falls on the Canadian side. Once we've activated our adventure passes from the Table Rock area, we're able to ride the red, blue and green Wego buses and we decided to visit the Clifton Hill area first. If you want to have some fun and festivities, the Clifton Hill area is the place to go in Niagara. The 175 foot high sky wheel is also located here. It's surrounded by a prehistoric theme park with miniature golf, go-karting and other rides. strict COVID measures in place. There are hand sanitizers uh, so that you can clean your hands and also you have to wear mas masks at all the public attractions and of course maintain social distancing.
as the Ferris wheel loads more passengers, you ascend slowly. Gradually, views of the theme park and the falls peeping out on the horizon can be seen. As the Ferris wheel ascends slowly, the views open up and you can see the Horseshoe Falls and the American Falls in the distance. Finally, we are off for a couple of turns. It's quite a fun ride. After finishing our Ferris wheel ride, we head back to Table Rock area to get a better view of the waterfalls. Table Rock has the Niagara Welcome Center, some restaurants, and other amenities. You can change the Wego bus lines here too. It's stunning to see the Niagara River suddenly drop away to the thunderous roar of the falls. After visiting the falls, we decide to pay a visit to the Skylon Tower. The Skylon Tower offers views of the falls from 775 feet high. The tower has two restaurants at its top, the revolving dining room and the upper summit suite buffet. We begin our ascent with a view of the American Falls. Skyland Tower offers 360 panoramic views of Niagara and the surrounding areas. It's a good idea to buy the day-night ticket for a few dollars more because the views are just as beautiful at night as they are during the day. On a clear, cloudless day, you can see the city of Toronto almost 70 kilometers away. With hazy weather, we could just barely make out the silhouette after zooming in. The wind here is strong enough to actually push you around. Stay with us as we come back to the Skyland Tower at night to view the light show on the falls. The 
Whirlpool Aero cable car designed in 1916 crosses the 1,770 feet gorge right over the Niagara Whirlpool. It is suspended 240 feet above the Niagara River. The journey across the gorge is not for the faint-hearted. Hello everyone, my name is Deirdre and I'll be your host for this crossing, so feel free to ask me any questions and please make sure to keep your masks on for the entire ride. To the right of the car is the Niagara River and the water coming towards us is around 35 to 40 kilometers an hour. And the amount of water that goes through the Niagara River is about 170 million liters every minute. The rapids upstream are Class 6, which is the highest you can go. They are the only Class 6 rapids in all of North America, which also makes them the strongest rapids in all of North America. Rapidly swirling water below gives you a sense of vertigo. That was quite a thrilling ride. It was pretty interesting to cross the US-Canada border four times in such a short period of time. Back in Niagara City, the weather seemed to have turned and the view of the falls looks as though that it's a cloud-making factory. With all the mist merging with the clouds above. We start our journey behind the falls. With COVID restrictions in place, the usually crowded lineup doesn't exist. We descend using a lift 125 feet. It opens up into a narrow tunnel. The tunnel opens up to two portal-like areas where you can see right behind the falls and feel the tons of water gushing over in a thunderous roar. At the 
very end of the final tunnel, you open up into an open air viewing area. You can see the water fall right by your side. Topside, we are greeted with a wonderful rainbow over the falls. We pay a visit to the floral show house, which has a miniature village outside. Apart from some beautiful floral showcases inside the greenhouses. Just look at those miniature houses on those pedestals. They look so real. This realistic looking mansion is only knee high. These tree houses are certainly attention grabbers. But there is something even more interesting playing around in them. That squirrel jumping around on the houses was quite entertaining. This water lily filled miniature lake with lake houses on its shore has something more interesting too. And here it comes. Inside the greenhouse, we are greeted with fish ponds surrounded by blooming orchids. Going to another room, we are greeted by this beautifully sculpted statue.
Those hanging parasols certainly give this room a different ambience. This room is full of orchids and carnivorous plants. After exiting the floral show house, we cross the road onto a walkway that goes along the Niagara River. There are some good views of the river and its rapids before it falls. Look at that upside down tree that seems to have created a cave in its middle. At night, don't forget to take a stroll by the falls to see all the light shows. as though the falls has caught fire. Stay with us as we capture more of these light shows from the heights of the Skylon Tower. This is the Whitewater Walk. These Class 6 Rapids are the only Class 6 Rapids in North America. Here's the walkway that skirts the Rapids to different viewing points. The whole park is a nature conservation area. It looks as though there are some 20 foot waves in some of the areas. We are approaching the Niagara Parks Butterfly Conservatory located at the Niagara Botanical Gardens. It's quite difficult to photograph these butterflies as they move very quickly. You'll be able to see them if you're viewing this on large screens. The butterflies come from Costa Rica, El Salvador, the Philippines and Australia. The whole conservatory creates the feeling of a tropical rainforest, including artificial waterfalls, orchids, sphagnum moss and other tropical flowering plants. This conservatory houses over 6,000 butterflies of 70 species at any one time. Okay. 
It was nice to see the butterflies chasing each other. There's an area that has butterfly chrysalis and cocoons for breeding them. Here we can see the butterflies feeding on oranges and bananas. We thought the butterfly conservatory might be boring. Contrary to that, it was really interesting to visit. But it's one of those places best viewed with your own eyes. Don't miss out walking on the recreated prairie on the outside of this conservatory. I don't think there's a more romantic sight than watching the moon rise reflected in the Niagara River while the light show is happening over the falls below. You can view this from the Skyline Tower. We have reached the end of our adventures at Niagara and I think this is a befitting way to bid all of you adieu and hope that one day you can make the visit too. Your support and suggestions inspire us to do better. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel.